Boy, God's good to us, isn't he? And you think of all that's happened, how we've been isolated, how we've been locked down, separated, couldn't see each other, couldn't be together. And then God allow us on this beautiful spring night with his divine air conditioning blowing under the tent that we can come together and sing and study and read the word and be together. We're a blessed people. 1937, an Irish evangelist came to Asheville, North Carolina. His name was William McBurney. He put a tent up on the main square in our little city and down at the river at the tobacco warehouse, another evangelist was there, J. Harold Smith. Those two evangelists were preaching in this small mountain town that some nights they'd run five to 10,000 a night under those meetings, a move of God. Almost a, a 38% of the city was in the services at night seeking God, the spirit of revival. That night, my dad went as a 17-year-old boy. He worked for a Jewish businessman. And when he got off work, he went out, locked up the store, started down across downtown Asheville. He heard the noise, and he walked in and sat on the very last seat, the back of the tent. And when he did, that night, Dr. McBurney was preaching on the fact that Jews are going to go home. They're going to have a land. 11 years before it happened. How could, they, how could he preach that? He preached the book. And 11 years before Israel was born, he was preaching there would be a homeland. It interested my dad because he worked for a Jew. And because of that conversation, my dad stayed after the service and talked to Dr. McBurney. And before the evening was over, my dad trusted the Lord Jesus Christ to be his Lord and Savior. He got saved in a tent meeting. My dad was a good basketball player. He had a full ride. He's like Dr. Bob Ferguson who played in the NBA. He just prayed a moment ago. My dad was a good basketball player. And he had a full ride to the University of North Carolina to play basketball. And when God saved him, he turned his back on that and went to Bible college. Didn't have any full ride. He had to milk cows at 4.30 in the morning to pay for his Bible college. Seven years later, it's 1944, the war's raging. My dad has a tent up with his brother Lee. They advertise this young evangelist, Lee and Ralph Sexton. And the tent was up in Biltmore, North Carolina, almost at the entrance to the famous Biltmore house, Biltmore State, there by the railroad track. People were coming, and the word got out what God was doing. And there were five or six young ladies from downtown Central United Methodist Church. And one of those young ladies... Uh, Jackie Buckner was a, a student at Brevard College. She was studying to be a Methodist missionary. And she came to that tent meeting not to get involved with God, not even to hear the singing. But her girlfriends told her they were two good-looking bachelors down there. <laughs> And she came. But she encountered the sweet Holy Spirit. And she got saved in that tent meeting. 1944. Ten years later, 
my dad's running another tent meeting in Barnardsville, North Carolina. And he's preaching and it comes down to the invitation. There's a little old boy sitting over on the left. There's so many people there. They ran out of chairs and benches so they asked all the children to play in the shave and sit in there. And if you're a kid, that, that, you love that idea. We get to play in the shavings. And I'd already made me some roads. I, I found a cricket, pulled his legs off, made him a car. And, <laughs> don't look so spiritual. You need therapy too. <laughs> but all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost settled in. And that night, it dawned on me I couldn't go to heaven because I was lost. Your daddy's the preacher. Your mama's the Sunday school teacher. That's not going to help me. Once you know, you're old enough to understand, then you got to have a personal relationship with the Lamb of God. Someone asked me earlier today, why in God's name would you still put up a tent when it's a, they called it a dinosaur? And I said, I love dinosaurs. I collect dinosaurs. How do you explain the goodness of the Lord and us being able to come together and to thank you? There's something special about a tent meeting. Anna, where are you sitting? Wave, wave your hand. Anna, where were you 30 years ago tonight? Where? Uh, under a tent meeting. And what happened that night? You got saved. <laughs> That's called fruit that remains. <laughs> 30 years ago. And 33 years ago, we were at Irwin, Tennessee. Where'd you go? Stand up. What happened that night? That's what happened. That's a good testimony. <laughs> what I'm, my point is, a lot of times people get saved. How many here tonight got saved in a tent meeting? Raise your hands. Look at that. Thank God for those. You never know what God's going to do. And we give him praise, glory, and honor. And so, as we gather here this week, we're starting a series of nights of seeking the Lord in the spirit of revival. And there's a difference in revival and evangelism. And we need to, we need to set the groundwork for that. Before we can get lost people the church has to be ready. We've got to get clean. We've got to get right. And that's why the old timers used to book a revival a lot different than we do. They used to book a two-week revival. First week was to get the church right. Second week was to go after lost people. And so what I want to remind you is that there's a, uh, an opportunity for us to see the presence and the power of God on the church again. Amen. And if there's ever been a day that needs it, it's this day and hour that we're in. Amen. So I want us to pray, and I want us to ask the Lord. I'm going to ask my pastor to come and uh, lead this prayer, and uh, I'm going to ask all of you, if you'll stand with me, and let's just agree together that God will rule and reign in all that needs to be done. And uh, I want to thank you again for your love, your prayers, and for being here tonight. And I just wanted to tell you why I love tent meetings. Because my whole family got saved in a tent meeting. Amen. Pastor Winston Parrish, Trinity Baptist Church in Asheville. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, God, we come into your presence tonight. And Lord... The truth is, you know each and every heart that's in this tent tonight. God, the facade that we put up as Christians, as people, God, you can see right through it. And Father, tonight you see every heart and every life, every mind, every motivation that's in this canvas room. 
And God, tonight as your man has spoken, Lord, tonight our burden is for the church. Lord, if we lose the church, God, what are we left with? Lord, I pray that tonight as your man comes and as he opens the word of God, Lord, I pray that you would open up the heavens. And God, that you would do something in this place that no man can get glory for, that no man can get honor for, that the sweet Holy Ghost of God would fall in this place. And God, that you would awaken hearts that are cold, places where there used to be hot embers, where is now just cold, cold. Lord, I pray that you'd ignite a fire. Lord, for the pastor that's here tonight that's ready to give up, Lord, for the evangelist who's tired of preaching the same message, who's weary and well-doing, God, for the Sunday school teacher who's been teaching for years and doesn't know if they can teach another lesson, for the choir member who's ready to stop singing, for the piano player who's ready to stop playing, God, for the church member who's ready to stop going, God, I pray that tonight that you do something in their hearts. Lord, that they'd see Jesus afresh and anew like they haven't before in years. Lord, that you would awaken something in each and every one of us. God, that in these last days that we'd be prepared, God, to be the people you want us to be. God, I'm thankful that in the Bible that I read, God, that your son Jesus took the disciples to the north. God, there at Caesarea Philippi. And Father, I remember what Jesus said at the gates of hell that the gates of all evil would never prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. And tonight, Father, in that authority and in that confidence, we stand upon the word of God. And in faith believing, we ask you to do a thing in this place tonight, God, that can't be explained in words. Lord, I pray that you touch your man tonight. Give him strength, give him clarity of mind, and God, use him. Fill him with the Holy Ghost of God. Lord, I pray that you would push back distraction and give us a few moments where our hearts can fix on what really matters. Do it for your sake and for your glory. It's in Jesus' name the church prays together. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Take your Bible tonight and turn with me in the Old Testament, if you would, to 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14. The book of Ezra talks about that we can have revival and that God can give us an opportunity or a window of grace and that it's possible. I was thinking earlier in the week about what is happening in our world and I got to thinking about the massive army and armament of Russia that in February unloaded and began to roll its tanks and armored personnel carriers into the nation of Ukraine. They predicted that the war would last anywhere from 24 to 36 hours, that there was no way that the Ukrainians could stop this mighty, massive army. But somewhere along the line, something happened School teachers, shopkeepers, retired men, teenage boys said, we're not going to give up our home. We're not going to give up our land. And what an army with millions and millions of dollars of armament could not do, a ragtag army that was built with passion and determination could do. And I believe with all my heart over the last couple of years, the devil has attempted to knock the breath out of the local New Testament church. The breath is always a type of the Holy Ghost. It's always a type of the the breath of God. And because of that, Many people today that want to talk about God, talk about revival, talk about church, we are now resigned to go back to say, well, I remember when. 
but there's no passion for today. There's no burden for today. They think it's just too late. It's too bad outside. It's too wicked. It's too dark. But I stand here tonight to tell you by the authority of God's word that if it's in the book, it's still in the book. And if God said it, it's still alive. And if God said we could, then we should. And I believe tonight when he make that declaration, if my people, which are called by my name. He's not asking the world to repent. He's not asking the world to come back. He's asking us to come back. He's asking us to be restored. I think for a moment about the crossroads we may have reached here as a people. If God doesn't give us back our passion, our burden, our tears, could it be that we are to that intersection in the life of the church and in the life of America that it really is repent or perish? Have we gotten to that intersection where it is revival or removal? The more I study about revival, and I've done that for decades, and the more I've researched revivals, and the more I've looked at revivals, you know what I've been always amazed with? That it's not a, a crowd that has it. It starts with one man or one woman or two women that agreed together to meet in their kitchen and pray or five guys that got together at work began to pray or one church got a burden or a, a Knox began to weep and said, give me Scotland or I die. It becomes a person that's got that brokenness before God. The future of our families and our schools and our churches tonight, even our communities, I believe is now at the feet of the local New Testament church. I believe revival is for the believer and I believe that revival is still available. That man, that woman, that teenager, that young adult that believes the Bible is the word of God you have now become the only hope for our nation. We've gotten to the situation and we've gotten to the point now that you can't tell any difference between a Democrat, a Republican, a Libertarian, or an Independent. The problem is not a political party. The party is they're unsaved. That's the problem. They're not born again. And it doesn't matter if we change parties, we get still unsaved people that are turning their back on a holy God. The only answer we've got is to get back to what God has given us as a people that we have the word of God and the truth of God and the power of God and the presence of God that's available to give us revival for our generation. The biblical revival that I spoke of it talks about if my people, God's people. Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, if my people which are called by what? My name. And then here comes that hard part. Here comes the homework assignment. The part I don't like, shall humble themselves. You see, it's always easy for me to humble you, but it's tough to humble me. And that's what God's saying. If we want to see revival, are we willing to really step on self and say, God, I don't have to be in the bulletin. I don't have to be in the headline. I don't have to have anybody know that I've spent this hour with you in prayer. I want you more than I want recognition. I want you more than I want to see anything else happen as far as a production or uh, any type of performance that goes at the house of God shall humble themselves. And then it says, and pray. And then what? Seek my face. And then here comes that extra part. And turn from their wicked ways. Well, wait a minute. He just said my people. He just said people that are called by my name. How can we have wicked ways? Well, we can have wicked ways because we have pride. We have wicked ways because we have jealousy. We have wicked ways because we have hard feelings. We have wicked ways because we're uh, absolutely green-eyed jealous of God blessing somebody else. 
And, and God said, if we want to really have revival, you've got to ask God to go down and cut this thing to the quick and say, God, what is inside of me doesn't look like you. I want you to cut it out so I can have the presence of God on my life. The power of God. And then notice what he says. Turn from their wicked ways. And then that word then, T-H-E-N, that's a condition. And here's what happens. God doesn't force revival. God's not going to take one of these preachers or evangelists or missionaries, deacons, Sunday school teacher, mom and dad. He's not going to take you out in the parking lot and tie you to the bumper of a truck and make you have revival. He's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. If you have revival, it'll be because you and God got alone together and you told God, God, I'm sick of me. I'm sick of this same old thing. I want to see some fresh oil on my life. I want to see some fresh anointing. God, if it'd be all right, would you give me my tears back? God, give me my passion back. Give me my burden back. And God, give me a little bit of that David spirit that I'm not intimidated by the Goliaths of this world that we can believe God for the sake of our children and our grandchildren that one more time they can see the power of God. Many times we do not get humble and it seems like the organized church is saying, we've got this. We know how to do church. We spend more time planning the production of our religious program than we do being humble before a holy God. We need to get back to where we realize how weak we are and say, God, we need you. That we can once again become a people of prayer and fulfill this scripture about seeking his face. And how do I seek his face? How, do I, how does that happen in 2022? I seek his face by turning away from the world. He's not in the world. He's away from the world. So if I want to seek his face, then I turn away from the world and say, God, I want to spend more time with you. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse number 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Our nation since 9-11 has been in a spirit of chaos and confusion. And every year that goes by, every year we turn our back more and more on to a holy God. We go into deeper confusion and we go into deeper chaos. All of you talking before service, saying things like this. I can't believe what's going on in my country. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I can't believe the perversion that's in my land. I can't believe the stands that's being taken by state leaders, national leaders. And there's a shock. There's a, a shock and awe effect on the people of faith. How did we get this far from God? How did we get this fast away from the Lord? And here's the problem. If this mic stand represents the Lord God Almighty, all right? And that represents God. And here I am, and he reached out and he touched me, and I touched him, he abides in me, and I abide in him. That's that relationship every day, walking with the Lord. But if we're not careful, we will do this. We will take this mic stand, and this mic stand will represent the world the flesh, and the devil. And we'll say, well, I'm not in the world. I'm not as bad as they are. I'm not as cold-hearted as they are. I'm not, I'm not listening to what they listen to. I'm not doing to what they're doing. But the measuring stick is not my relationship to the world. The measuring stick is, where did I leave God? Where's the power of God? Where's the presence of God? Where's the conviction of the holy God? I'm still measuring off the world and that's not the standard that belongs to the church. We can't walk in on Sunday morning and remain smug that we're not like the world. We're not bad like the world. My God in heaven, we left the power of God. We left the presence of God. We left the tears and the brokenness that belongs to the people of God. We're measuring from the world 
rather than from the presence of God. And because of this chaos and confusion, I'm convinced tonight that it is the beginning of judgment of a holy God on our land. We've substituted the worship of money and materialism in our nation for what that used to be built on morals and values. And that desire for more things, more toys, more materialism has almost destroyed a whole generation. We've got young people being murdered for a pair of tennis shoes. I watched a man get shot three times the other night on TV on the news report because they wanted his cell phone. And they shot him. Said, tell me the password for your cell phone. And he wouldn't tell them. They shot him again. Shot him three times and killed him for the lust, for the greed of a cell phone. What in God's name are we thinking? Think about what we've reduced our children to. We fed them MTV and VH1. We fed them Hollywood and movies that all are about materialism and about the things of this world. But there's no reminder left about the things of God. In our infinite wisdom, we said, let's get rid of God. Let's don't, let's don't be in danger of influence a child. Let's, let's don't read a Bible verse at school. No, let's don't have a prayer at school. So we jettisoned God. We threw the Bible out and now we're reaping the whirlwind of a society that has no God. There's nothing in their heart, nothing in their fiber that will even bring them to any type of moral consciousness. And what happened in our nation's capital during this transition is we traded statesmen in Washington, D.C. that used to honor God, that used to love America, and they valued their own name and their own personal integrity. But now we've traded those statesmen for politicians. And those politicians will now sell his or her vote and their soul at the same time. And now we have members of the Congress and the Senate that are more loyal to the nation of communist China than they are to the people that voted for them and elected them. When they released the China virus on the world, they stood and took up for them and defended them because of their business dealings in that world. Greed has driven us into slavery and servitude to a communist country. Many bankers and business leaders and elected officials, Democratic and Republican, have all drunk the China Kool-Aid just like the NBA has. And they're all wrapped up in making sure that we don't offend anyone in China. Can you even imagine the audacity of the Chinese last month who called Hollywood and said, you need to take the Statue of Liberty out of the Spider-Man movie that kids are gonna watch because we don't want the Statue of Liberty being shown in our country. God help us. And I don't know who Spider-Man is, but I ought to hug his neck if he likes the Statue of Liberty. And we ought to say, we're not only not going to take it out, we're going to put it up about every five minutes and say that we still love God, we still love America, and we still are going to do what's right. Do we need a revival? Yes, we do. The nation is going down the drain of chaos and confusion. And from the church house to the White House, we've sold our soul for a bowl of punch. No longer is that brokenness in the pulpits of America. The pastors are not approaching the holy desk with tears or brokenness. But they're being pressured by a church family that wants religious entertainment or a program that they can get through and tell their friends how cool our pastor is. He never mentions sin. He never talks about right or wrong. Oh, that God would raise up 
some men of faith one more time that would love God and love his word and not be selling out for a bowl of pottage, a parsonage, a paycheck, or a pension, that we would be men of God and men of faith for this day and for this hour. Market Watch magazine has reported this sin of greed in the world of pharmaceuticals. Market Watch is a trade magazine in the stock market. And it says that China began lowering their prices to, help to lure American manufacturers. And by lowering their costs, lower labor than American manufacturers of pharmaceuticals, antibiotics, they could not compete. And so they just began to close our factories in America. And now today, 2022, with the help of the Congress and the government, they've made it easy for these pharmaceutical companies to remove the guardrails and even the security concerns that comes with who's making the medicine that you're putting in your body. Here's what Market Watch reported this past week. The United States has virtually no capacity, no capacity to manufacture antibiotics. China controls 90%, 90% of the global inputs needed to make antibiotic medicines. The medicine that you need when you get bronchitis, the medicine that you need when you get pneumonia, when the flu hits, what's the secondary disease that comes with the flu? Pneumonia. When the flu epidemic hit us, do you know what happened to America during that flu epidemic of 1917, 1918, 1919? Do you know what happened? 675,000 people died, not of the flu. They died of pneumonia. And if you don't have antibiotics, you can't treat that. But if America tells God to go away and leave us alone, we don't need you, God, we might find out we do need him. We might find out we do need God again because we've moved away. And the blood killer sepsis, the only medicine that's made that attacks that deadly blood disease when a person is sick is made in communist China. We have none in the United States. We're in a state of chaos and confusion. Penicillin, a basic medicine, a basic antibiotic. And China supported the Chinese companies to sell below market level. Here's an American company and he's got a laboratory and he's fermenting and making penicillin vi uh, yeast virus. And here's a Chinese company. China says, we'll subsidize you, you cut the price. Put him out of business. And American businesses started closing or shutting down their factories making penicillin. And you know what happened? America closed the only U.S. fermentation plant we had. And that one plant in the United States of America made 70% of the world's penicillin. One plant. 70% of the world's penicillin. Now it's padlocked and closed and moved to China. We don't have time to go through all the broad spectrum of what's happening in the world and how it's affecting our nation, but I believe there's a direct link to turning our back on God and rejecting the word of God and the things of God. God doesn't have to send lightning to the Walmart or to the Costco to judge us. All God's got to do is just turn his back and leave us alone. What are we going to do? We get worse and worse. We get further away from God. We abandon his ways and his walk. And the next thing we know, the people are suffering because we've left God out. Have you heard about the baby formula? There's a shortage. But you need to know, by the way, that this baby formula shortage 
is a $56 billion market every year. $56 billion baby formula. There's a growing demand for baby formula in the exploding economy of China because their people are making more money and it's being passed down to a new middle class. Inside baby formula, there is a, a fatty nutrient that has to be in baby formula, a protein, olic palmetic olic, OPO. It's a unique fact structure found in mother's milk. And while we sit here tonight and wonder why there's a shortage of baby formula, China controls 90% of OPO that you use to make baby formula. If you want to control somebody, control their money and control their food. And then start controlling the food of their children. And then you see if everybody's going to play nice while you get to do what you want to do. You see, according to the Business Channel last Friday, they said that 44% of all the baby formula in America, not what we import from Ireland, not what we're importing from India or from England, but 44% of the baby formula in our country is coming from communist China. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 19 says, So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. We are now placing our children and our grandchildren's medicine and even their food on the altar of greed that we can make one more dollar. We can make one more deal. We can buy out one more country. That we can buy a one more Lamborghini. That we can have one more mansion with one more pool. And ladies and gentlemen, we've become intoxicated with this materialistic world and we've lost the real value of life, which is serving God, loving God, loving your wife, loving your children, and loving them being able to grow up in a free land and not to be encumbered by the foolishness of this world. I'm afraid that we have become like the nation of Israel when God was judging them. And God judged Israel for her disobedience. And the word of God teaches that they got what they wanted, but they lost what they had. And there's no greater nation on planet earth than what God has given us, the land of the free and the home of the brave. But all of a sudden, we're selling it on the auction block. We're selling this out. We're selling our own country out so we can have another deal with somebody else. America has walked against the light and the word of God. We've hardened our heart. We've now established ourselves with a stiff neck. Proverbs chapter one and verse 29 says, for they hated knowledge. They hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Verse number 30 says, they would none of my counsel. Listen to this phrase. They despised all my reproof. Have you ever seen such venom against the things of God? Such a despising attitude to even talk about moral, faith, families. You want to make somebody mad? Tell them you believe that God made a man and a woman. Yeah. Tell them that you believe that the, the greatest foundation in the world is a marriage. Huh? Huh? Why, why do they despise that? Because it goes against what they want. A flesh that's out of control, worshiping the gods of this world. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God doesn't have to open up the earth and drop us into it to get our attention. All God has to do is continue to let us play church, play religion, and we'll pay with the price of our own children and our own grandchildren. How is it we can send our babies off to college and spend thirty, forty thousand dollars a year and spend a hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars for their education and they come home with their diploma and they don't like you and they don't like your God and they don't want to love your country or love America? Why? Because they didn't get an education, they got an indoctrination. 
And that's what we're up against if we don't have revival in the local church. The beginning of education is in the house of God. The beginning of knowing the things of the Lord is in the house of God. We've got to get back to the very foundation that God gave us as a people of faith. It truly is repent or perish. It truly is revival or removal. Romans chapter 14 and verse number 12. It says, so then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We're fighting a battle against lust and greed. This lust and greed has infected our land. It's even, listen to me, it's even affected the house of God. It's moved into the Christian home. And all of a sudden, it's all about me. It's a selfie generation. Make me happy. Satisfy me. Make our family happy. And all of a sudden, people say, well, I'm not gonna believe the word of God or the things of God because that's just not cool in today's world. And 2 Corinthians 5, 10 says, for every one of us must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, whether it be what? Good or bad. This past week, ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of the Treasurer of the United States of America testified in Washington, D.C. on May the 10th, 2022, before the Senate. Secretary of Treasurer Yellen. I could not believe what I heard as I watched the testimony, but she inserted in her report before the Senate this shocking statement. I quote, there is a great financial advantage in the United States economy for abortion. Secretary Treasurer, Janet Yellen, a member of the president's cabinet. And what is she asserting? She's saying that killing babies is good for business. How far from God have we gone? How fast have we left the things of God? Listen to her statement. Eliminating when or whether to have children would have damaging effects on our economy. Roe versus Wade, ruling, and the liberty of abortions has helped increase the labor force participation of our country. God have mercy on us. She's saying we have more people being able to go to work if we can kill more babies. This is the Secretary of Treasury. This is not Department of Human Resources. This is not the Health Department. This is the Treasury Department. It's supposed to be talking about inflation. It's supposed to be talking about why your gasoline is $5 a gallon. But are they talking about the inflation? No, they're talking about, we need to kill more babies. It's good for the economy. We can have more people in the labor force. May God have mercy on America. Do we need revival? Yes, we need revival. 885,000 abortions last year. 500 million tax dollars given to Planned Parenthood. And then does black lives matter? Yes, black lives matter. Absolutely they matter. 400,000 black babies were aborted last year. And since Roe versus Wade went in, 18 to 19 million black babies have been aborted. Black lives matter. Yes, they matter. Because you need to know it's a sin before a holy God. And we need to beg God to awake America. And Janet Yellen, may God have mercy on your greedy soul and your bloody hands. The list of social issues and the decline of the American marriage and the American home is because we've turned our back on a holy God. And God said if we would turn back to him, he would forgive us. You say, well, my, my daughter had an abortion. My best friend had an abortion. Aren't you grateful for grace and mercy? 
Aren't you grateful that it can be forgiven, washed in the blood of the Lamb, never to be remembered against you again? You say, well, I, I run my life. I got involved in the criminal element. I got involved in this scam. I got involved with alcohol. I got involved with drugs. Aren't you grateful for grace and mercy? Aren't you grateful that you can go to Jesus Christ? Aren't you grateful you can get born again and that can start all over? Aren't you grateful that God will look your way, break the bonds of sin, set you free by the grace of God? All things can become new. Old things things pass away because of the power of God. Chaos and confusion is the beginning of the judgment of a holy God. God created male and female. God was not confused the day he made Adam and Eve. God didn't sit around and say, I don't know, could be, maybe. God said, it was male and female. But we've become so sin sick in our country, we now want to sexualize little four-year-olds and five-year-olds. The new bill in government, they want to take over K-4, K-5, first, second, third grade and teach your children sex education and how they can decide whether or not they're a homosexual or a lesbian or whether or not they're a boy or a girl. Ladies and gentlemen, if we allow that, the judgment of God is only beginning. May God help our perverted leaders in wicked ways, robbing our babies of their innocence and the childhood of playing. Critical race theory being brought into the school to teach racial hatred and to separate us from each other. My friend, Dr. Clarence Sexton, wrote a powerful book on Ezra. The title of that book is Ezra Returning to God. There's a soul-searching statement that has gotten a hold of me out of that book. He wrote this, we must stop making Babylon a better place to live and return to the God of the Bible. Let's quit building new apartments in Babylon. Let's quit paving roads in Babylon. Let's pack up and go back home to the Father's house. Let's get back to where we belong, at the house of God with the people of God. My pastor, Winston Parrish, delivered his heart with a scriptural expose on the devil's onslaught on our homes and children, leaving the heritage on Sunday morning and it deals with the battle of the last days and then that message is reinforced that the battle is not coming the battle is here it's Satan's reveal he's not trying to hide his agenda anymore he's revealed who he is I've got a whole list of things that we could go through but I want to stop right here tonight and just give you a little bit of a burden on why we need revival. It's not about me or you. We got to think about who's behind us. Who's going to love your children? Some of your children are not in church. They're not, they're not going to be over here praying for revival. Some of your grandbabies are out in the world. They're, they're, they, they're listening to the world. They're not listening to me or to you. What's the answer? It's the power of God. It's the presence of God. It's old time conviction. It's not my brother or my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. I want you to stand with me tonight and I want us to close with a prayer that God would do something for us that we're not able to do for ourselves. With our heads bowed and no one looking, there may be someone under the tent tonight. I've preached to the church, but there may be someone under the tent tonight that say, Pastor Ralph, if I died right now or Jesus were to come, I'm not saved. I'm not sure I'm saved. Pray for me. Would you slip that hand up for prayer? God bless you, sir. Is there another one?
God bless you, ma'am. Is there another one? Just put that hand up and down. I'm not saved. I'm not sure I'm saved. How many Christians say, Brother Ralph, I'm trying to serve the Lord. But I'll admit tonight, I've been in a dark place. I've been in a battle. And, uh, and I, I need revival. It's got to happen for me to keep going. Would you raise your hand and say, I need that revival? Amen. Well, here's what let's do. Uh, the third question is, how many do you, of you tonight have somebody you love that's out in the world and you want to see God reach them tonight? You want to be that prayer warrior for them. Let's reverse the order. And, and if you're burdened over someone, they may be in the tent tonight. They may be watching online. You come, just step out of the seat. And if you're burdened over someone, if you can't kneel, if you got a bad back, you can come and stand or you can sit on one of these front chairs, but you can come and pray. If you raised your hand, you need personal revival. You need God to break that blackness off of you, that discouragement off of you. Then I want you to come. I want you to step out and come. You need prayer help. The pastors are here. The, the deacons are here. They'll meet you in the altar. You hold up your hand. Mom and dad, you come. Pass me not, old gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Church, you lead the way while God's moving. Let's ask God to revive us one more time. If my people, which are called by my name, and you bring that petition to the Lord tonight, you just come on while God's moving. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art
watching and I can feel it angels are watching over me there's many miles ahead till I get home still I'm safely kept before your throne Lord I Lord, I believe your angels are watching over me. I've walked the barren wilderness where my pillow was a stone. And I've been through the darkest caverns where no light has ever shone. Still I Who was down on their knees And Lord I thank you for the people Praying all this time for me Help me sing it Somebody's praying And I from what I can see Lord I believe Lord I believe somebody's praying for me somebody's praying for brokenness of the people the hearts before our holy lord thank you for that song somebody's praying in case you didn't notice just when we started the invitation we fried one of the things and it kicked over in the piano started playing a demo Anytime God's moving, you've got a war raging to be a distraction to anything that can see what's happening. But all, all that does just let you know you're at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. We're just going to get her all fixed up and we'll start again in the morning. At 10 o'clock in the morning, you're invited to come back. Dr. Daniel Buchanan is going to teach Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning at 10 a.m. on prayer, praying for our churches, praying for our children, how to target your prayer, how to pray for your preacher. You'll want to be here 10 o'clock, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning. We'll be here for prayer. We'll take a little break in the afternoon, then we'll be back here at uh, choir practice, and then at 7.30.